And uh, today there's an article out at Breitbart. Headline says, Madonna mocks Christ's Last Supper in Vanity Fair photo shoot. Comment there how disgusting you think this is, because I do. I think it's totally gross and blasphemous. Here's the article. It says, the pop star Madonna has launched an attention-grabbing photo montage in Vanity Fair, Italia, posing variously as the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ, featuring dolls apparently representing dead babies. Returning to the sensationalist shock art that launched her celebrity in the 1980s, the 64-year-old diva poses as the mother of sorrows for the cover photo, which depicts her heart pierced by seven swords, traditional iconography for the seven sorrows of Mary. More disturbing still for many Christians, Madonna also poses three times as Jesus Christ during the Last Supper, surrounded by the half-naked women, holding up bread in an apparent reference to the Catholic Mass. It is, or rather, in the accompanying interview, Madonna plays the role of victim of vicious attacks by the Catholic Church in which she was raised. In Rome, quote, I was fiercely criticized by the Catholic Church, she asserts, adding that while she was promoting in bed with Madonna, she was astounded to see herself attacked by the church, quote, because it, uh, it because it incapable of understanding how much work was trying to produce something good, close quote. I guess she's referring to the church. The church was incapable of understanding her creative juices, I guess. She goes on to say, quote, I quickly realized that they were that they were the problem, not me. They were the problem because they did not understand that my work as an artist, united people, gave them freedom of expression and unity. It was the mirror of Jesus's teaching, close quote. Oh, really? The mirror of Jesus' teaching. Hmm. Photographer Luigi directed Madonna's two-day photo shoot, which reportedly involved a crew of more than 80 people. Quote, in this very special issue, Madonna becomes Madonna again, an icon, not just the embodiment of a musical trend or a style of dress, but a figure of disturbing as, as disturbing as she is sacred, said Oliver head of editorial content for Vanity Fair France. Madonna has made a career out of mocking her Catholic faith in various ways, from portrayals of Jesus's crucifixion to songs such as Like a Virgin, Like a Prayer, and Live to Tell. And her most recent photo shoot will come across to many as a tired, unimaginative retread of her past excuses. Well put, I would say. Well put. Early in her professional life, the pop star chose to make blasphemy a her preferred stock and trade. And when uh, other gimmicks fail, she inevitably returns to the springboard of her celebrity. Said another way, the dog returns to its vomit. That was my, I added that part. It's not in the article. But nonetheless, there you go. That's the article out of, uh, out of Breitbart. Now, <clears throat> so... I've said this a billion times on this program before, if you've listened at all over the last couple of years, then you've heard me say this. I can somehow weirdly tolerate people, uh, you know, being blasphemous against the Lord, like, say, in uh, movies or television shows, things like that. For some odd reason, I tolerate those more. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just, just being honest. But when it comes to Our Lady, I have zero tolerance. If you depict our lady in anything other than what she actually was, I turn you off. I have no I have no use for that. I don't watch those films. I don't watch those television series or they're, you know, like for Chosen, for instance. I know a lot of people love Chosen. I'm not the biggest fan of Chosen. I want to be. I would love to be. But to be honest with you, I just can't tolerate the way in which they depict our lady. There are other issues in that series that I would point out, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get back to Madonna. Madonna attacks our lady in particular. Now, today's gospel, as I read to you a moment ago in the in the segment, was all about Our Lady and uh, the friends, potentially cousins of Jesus uh, out there waiting to see him. And what does Jesus say? Who are my mother and my brother and my sisters? Here, those who do the will of God. So many people have used this verse to attack Our Lady, to diminish her role, her capacity, to say, see, look, even Jesus snubs her. They might also point to John's gospel in chapter two at the wedding feast of Cana when he calls her woman 
as though Jesus would be derogatory to his own blessed mother, right? Like as if he would try to talk down at her, let alone where are the feminists that come out in defense of women, like as if though the word woman was somehow a derogatory term. It's not. And it always, when I discovered the, the dignity and the beauty of Our Lady, it literally changed my faith. I gave my heart to Christ and to his church before I understood Our Lady. I still struggled with Our Lady as a Catholic. I remember the first time I ever tried to pray the rosary. I'm like, well, I'm, I guess I'm Catholic. I guess I'm supposed to pray this rosary thing. And I remember praying it. I was in my car and I didn't want anybody to hear me. It was a very awkward feeling to be praying this rosary. And then I remember like when you pray in the, the royal we, right? Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. I remember praying that thinking there's nobody here. It's just me. Why am I? Why am I doing that? This feels weird. So I remember changing the words, pray for me, a sinner, now at the hour of my death. And then I remember reading a book by Dr. Scott Hahn, First Comes Love. And it was my first real exposure to understanding the deeper layers of what happened at Calvary and how our Lord gave to me more than just himself. He gave also his mother and his brothers and his sisters the the, the, the cloud, the chorus, the angelic choir. He gave us the, the saints that surround us every single day that are in the beatific vision, especially at Holy Mass where heaven and earth collide. He gave us a family. He never intended to just give us himself. He could have done that without dying. He could have done that without suffering. But instead, he came to do something very intentional, very specific. And so when we read in Luke's gospel and uh, Luke chapter one, verse 20, uh, 28, that the angel comes before from the very face of God and comes to this woman, this virgin betrothed to Joseph in this town of Nazareth. And he uses this very specific word, kekaretomene, hail full of grace. Cornelius Elapide had a lot to say on this particular, and I want to say, I want to share this with you because it is so crucial and important. Kekaretomene is a Greek word. It means she was full of grace. She is full of grace, and she will always be full of grace. She is more intentionally created, and her role is more intentional than any other character in sacred scripture, and yet we pass by this with such flippancy, such casualness, and we want to reduce her stature because we can't wrap our heads around how God in his infinite goodness and mightiness could create so perfect a creature, so dignified a creature as the Blessed Virgin Mary. Cornelius Lapide would say this word signifies one that the Blessed Virgin had a gift of grace bestowed upon her by God. And that in a full measure of excellence beyond other just and holy persons for this epithet is applied solely to the blessed virgin to the end that she might be made worthy to become in time, the mother of God. Number two, that she by means of this gift of grace was wonderfully well pleasing in the sight of God and of all his angels and in their eyes altogether lovely and beautiful so that Christ chose her before all others. For his mother. Did you catch that? Cornelius Lapide, the great scripture scholar, has much to say on this. Our Lady was uh, the choice. There wasn't a list. It's not like our Lord and the angel had like a short list. All right, Gabriel, listen. Okay, first, stop by Nazareth. There's a lady there named Miriam. Go see her. If she's up for it, fantastic. We'll save humankind through her. But if she's not, don't worry. Go to this village over. There's a, there's a little uh, young lady there. Her name is Lily. Check out Lily. See if Lily, okay, Lily, no. All right, go see, go see Eva over, no. Okay, go see Brenda, no. There was not a list. There was just Our Lady. Just that's it. And she had full power and capacity to say yes or no. She chose yes. She saved you. You're welcome. You're welcome. She said yes. She saved you because she said yes to the Lord's will and intention for her life. And thus Christ became, uh, took on flesh and dwelt among men. And thus he went to Calvary and there suffered and died. And at the foot of that cross was this lady who she was told when he was a child, when he was a baby in the temple, that a sword would pierce her heart also. In Luke chapter two, verse 35. Her heart would be pierced because this child would be a contradiction. 
And she understood because she she knew the scriptures better than you and than me. And if you ask the question, Mary, did you know? Yes, 100 percent. Yes, she absolutely knew that one greater than Moses would come, that one like in Isaiah 53 would have to suffer and die and be whipped to be scourged, to be mocked and have to die for the sins of the people. And she stood there and silently silently watched her divine child nearly drowned to death as his lungs filled with fluid as he struggled to pick himself up on those nails and to rise up to take a breath to say behold thy mother she is the kekaratomene she is the full of grace she is the gibira the queen mother who rules at the right hand of her divine child. And she has thicker skin than you do and than I do. And she tolerates the injustices, the blasphemies, and all the rest. And I'm sure at this moment she is whispering the, into the ear of her divine child the name of Madonna. Forgive him, my son, for she knows not what she does. Madonna, repent and believe in the gospel because your day is coming. And if you die in a state of mortal sin, you are going to give an account and look into the eyes of Jesus Christ and have to give an account of what you did and said and taught the rest of this world through your blasphemies in relation to his mom. It's not too late. Go to confession. Confession. 